Please like the video. For four years doing research for a book, I interviewed the families of those who died while undercover for the CIA widows and widowers, fatherless and motherless children, brothers and sisters. Most had died violently, bombings, kidnappings, torture. Their faces and their voices come to mind now as I read of former President Donald Trump possibly taking ultra-sensitive classified documents. Others have written that Trump's actions may be unlawful and indefensible. But I think of the dishonor brought upon the memories of those who gave their all for this country, who volunteered in the belief that their commander-in-chief would have their backs. The least they have a right to expect is the safeguarding of their sources and methods that produce critical intelligence and upon which lives depend. A redacted version of the affidavit for the Mar-a-Lago search warrant released Friday confirms the worst fears of many within the intelligence community. The reference to HCS for Human Control System alludes to intelligence gathered by covert operatives men and women in harm's way. Such materials, should they fall into the wrong hands, could endanger not only American operatives but legions of foreign nationals who provide them intelligence. Trump's team has claimed that he had absolute authority to declassify documents. He has also shared audio on his social media website, Truth Social, that I did nothing wrong. How did we come to this point? Trump is not the answer, merely the ultimate expression of a slow and steady erosion of respect for state secrets, the routine mishandling of sensitive documents, and the slipshod and uneven prosecution of those who willfully violated the laws governing classified documents in particular, the coddling of the powerful and the harsh punishment of their underlings. Against such a backdrop, Trump's dangerously casual handling of state secrets seems all but inevitable, the natural extension of a broken system. Such actions cast a shocking light on a bureaucracy corrupted by power, arrogance, and petty opportunism. The allegations are not merely violations of some arcane bureaucratic rules governing documents. Trump may have betrayed those who put their lives at risk, and, by example, opened the door to an even more permissive security environment. For years now, prosecution for such violations has been defined not by what was taken, but by whom. From senior officials to a four-star general, the unspoken mantra has been do as we say, not as we do. The system is rife with apologists and enablers complicit in promoting a double standard that we now may see playing out at Mar-a-Lago. The normalization of such behavior may find its fullest and most pernicious expression in the actions of the former commander-in-chief himself. Often lost in the debates over whether the search of Trump's Florida residence was justified and whether the president possesses the power to declassify by fiat, a concept as doubtful as it is dangerous, is the core principle, respect for state secrets is integral to the protection of American lives. The success of any intelligence gathering operation, any military campaign, any diplomatic undertaking, rests upon the ability to keep secrets. And the ultimate custodial responsibility for securing those secrets is in the hands of a president. He, above all others, bears that burden and sets the example for others to follow. Failure to honor that trust sends shudders through the entire national security apparatus and signals a kind of moral collapse that reverberates throughout the ranks of those pledged to serve and defend.